the, there were two different camps. There was the Fairlight camp and there was the Sinclair camp. Fairlight was taking clumps that was a verse, and then another bit, and then a chorus, and then a verse, and so on, the, all the NPC type of thing, where you cut and paste bits together. Synclavi didn't have cut and paste, so when you played a part in, you had to play from the beginning to the end. And that's how I sort of learned to program, which was, in a way, a bit like playing a piece, but I would, if I was playing my hi-hats, I start at the beginning and I play through to the end. I think my tracks breathe in a way. Um, I think that they have a because they aren't just repetitious stuff. I, I'm not too proud to use loops or take things if I need them, but they'll tend to be for little stuff. Like I might just say, okay, I'll run a shaker there just to, for time. And then once I've done everything else, I still quite happily like the shaker. So I leave that shaker loop there. You can see that I'm running one BFD master. Then I'm running kicks two, which is in fact a different sound from kick one. Separate patch. I'll do tom overdubs, cymbal overdubs, my the the hi hat as a separate overdub as well. Um, so that in this case, what I've been doing is I decided when I started the, the track, I played along with my the guide piano, and played a. So I'm layering two kicks there. You can see that there's the IOT kick. Um, and also an 808 type kick, something a bit softer. There, Paddy. I've got a small snare at the beginning, which I put on the BFT track two. And then we've got a bigger snare that comes in later. A number of different symbols. I, again, will manipulate the symbols as I'm going through the song. Um, I'm running four toms. Which these two are the same, but what I've done, if you look, so I pitched this one up and moved it hard left. This one in is back in its natural tuning, is further in a bit, and gradually moved to the, the right. I'm running two snares. I'm running a bit of the uh, old 8 bit kick along with the A up. And then if I look at my, I don't, if I look at my mixer, we're running mono tracks, mono outs for the snare, for the kick, for the hi hat. These are all sub mixing out through the thing. So the toms come as a stereo pair, cymbals come as a stereo pair, and then I'm running the room and the ambulances. And I'm feeding those through to Pro Tools using its busing system. So that if I look at this, there's a plug in send. So I'm using all these sends here to provide individual tracks, um, which I can then, in this case, I, you know, manipulate as I wish, put an effect on, and so on. Um, and that's a, a, uh, a typical way that I'll be doing pop programming. It's probably a lot different from everybody else, but it's the way that I, and it's the same thing, I, I even when I'm doing urban tracks, I tend to work in the same way. I'm building patches because I tend to think in la in terms of layering colors. And that's just the sub. BFD allows me to do that very well. Um, and so I'll often move these things around here. I'll be layering stuff if I need to. Um, I'm putting sounds in places. I have setups that I like the way that I like my hi hats to be. I don't like this so much, although there's a setup I like a, when I'm programming my hi-hats, I have a setup here which allows me to um, have all my closed hats here and then I put my right, my open hats here so that and so on, and that's just something that I built because it gives me more feel. I find that this isn't right for me and I don't try and play everything at once, um, but I do try and think a little bit like a drummer. My roles, I always let one hand, uh, when I'm doing a role, most drummers have a stronger hand or a weaker hand. So I'll tend to have the roles where one hand, is, one beat is slightly stronger, and so they go up, it'll, they'll go up with one hand slightly stronger than the other. 
I'll tend to manipulate the sounds through the song to just so they fit with the sections. Uh, the toms at the end may not actually have the same setups as the toms at the beginning. I often will adapt and um, move the um, move these faders around as I'm recording the tom. So it might be that at the beginning of a song, the toms are set up like that. I want to dry. And I may have raised the pitch on them. I may have done something else. I may have softened the front edge. And then as I go through, I adapt and I change. I do this on the fly. I don't automate them because I'm just recording it down. I know if I have to go back, I can, you know, I can get it back quickly enough. 